morning. How's everybody doing today? Uh, Chief, you want to come up here too? Yes, I would. Absolutely. Uh, does everybody have a copy of the press release? No. 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 Okay. You want to pass that around, please? <laughs> I think it's important that everybody at least gets a copy of the press release. Um, the press release will be sent out uh, to everyone that usually receives the press release. Um, I just wanted the opportunity to uh, also have this uh, uh, press conference here with the agencies that assisted us. Um, I will uh, give a, I will actually read a press release that is going out, and then I'll also make some brief statements after that. And uh, when we conclude, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask as well. Do you have a mug shot of Mr. Cohen? Yes, I do. Uh, if you are interested in a, a copy of the, the mug shot, just leave your email with us before you leave, and the detectives will email it out for you today. People standing up here with me today to my left is uh, State University Police of New Paltz Chief David DeGacken. To my immediate right is uh, the Ulster County Sheriff's Office, uh, Under Sheriff Frank Falutico, and to his right is Town of New Paltz Police, uh, sorry, Supervisor, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Town of New Paltz Supervisor Susan Zimmett. Uh, the New Paltz Police Department uh, reports the arrest of Adam J. Keller, age 19. Mr. Keller was arrested on February 4th, 2012 at 1 a.m. on charges burglary in the third degree a D felony, uh, one count of criminal possession of stolen property in the fourth degree, an E felony. Mr. Keller's arrest concludes a month-long investigation of 20 commercial burglaries in the town and village of New Paltz. Uh, Ms., uh, on December 29th, 2011, the New Paltz Police Department responded to a reported burglary at the Mud Puddle Cafe in the Water Street Market. In the following weeks, the New Paltz Police Department investigated 19 additional burglary complaints. Uh, during this time, the members of the New Paltz Police Department, the Ulster County Sheriff's Office, SUNY New Paltz Police, uh, followed up on leads, conducted numerous plainclothes uh, investigations and patrols of our business uh, area in the town and village. Mr. Keller targeted specific commercial buildings uh, that he believed to be either not alarmed or in easy access uh, in, in order to do these burglaries. He would force his way in through windows or doors, um, and uh, while in these buildings, he would remove cash. Based on extensive field interviews, uh, Mr. Keller uh, was developed as a suspect. Mr. Keller was located Friday evening and brought back to the New Paltz Police Department where he was interviewed. Uh, during the interview, Mr. Keller uh, did make statements, uh, which subsequently led to his arrest. At the time of his arrest, Mr. Keller was charged with burglary, criminal possession of stolen property. He was arraigned by Town of New Paltz Justice Jonathan Katz, remanded to the Ulster County Jail in lieu of $100,000 bail. A preliminary hearing is scheduled for February 7th at 6 p.m., and that will be before the Town Justice uh, James Bacon. Uh, this investigation is still ongoing, um, and additional charges are uh, going to be filed. Uh, the New Paltz Police Department was assisted, as I said, by the Ulster County Sheriff's Office and the SUNY Police Department. <clears throat> I would just like to uh, thank the uh, SUNY Police Department and the Ulster County Sheriff's Office uh, for their assistance in this investigation. The manpower that they provided <clears throat> and working cooperation uh, between the agencies proves to be irreplaceable and creates the best possible service to our community. I also want to personally thank uh, members of the New Paltz Police Department for their efforts while on routine patrol or doing this plainclothes detail. Uh, they really put a lot of effort and time into it. Um, I also want to especially thank our detectives, uh, Detective Sergeant Rob Lucchese and Detective Scott Butler. Their dedication and not leaving a rock unturned uh, led to a successful investigation and I'm confident for a successful prosecution as well. Uh, one further thing that I'd like to say, during these burglaries, there was a lot of different evidence that was gathered linking the suspect to all the burglaries. A big portion of this uh, really came down to also the Ulster County Sheriff's Department office uh, dive team that uh, provided their dive team to recover some stuff out of the Walk Hill River. 
which trust me is not an easy task even if you like to dive. Um, however, uh, again, as I said, the investigation is continuing and there's more items that we found out during the interview uh, that needs to be recovered from the river, so we will be counting on their assistance as well uh, to recover more of the property. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. A couple, a bunch of questions. Uh, numbers. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, there are 20, 20 incidents. Uh, how many, uh, how many uh, do we die allegedly? I, be I believe the number is 11, 11. successful uh, burglaries. Okay. Uh, the other ones were attempts. And is the kid, I call it a kid, everybody's a kid to me. Um, uh, that now. He, is he a local, local kid? Uh, he, he is local. Uh, at this school? time, no, he's uh, 19 years of age. Yeah. I'm not sure of the high school that he went to, uh, but he is from this area. Uh, at this time, he doesn't have an address or residence that he's using. Okay. He's, staying with different, he's staying with different friends. Uh -huh. okay. Was uh, he a freshman at New Paltz? No, he was not no. a student at this time. Okay, a couple different things. Um, do you have a numerical amount on how much the alleged thefts uh, equate to? I don't have that number. It wasn't a lot of cash. Okay. Um, you know, it was a, a small amount that was taken each time. And you alluded to that there would be new charges. <coughs> what what would they be? Or the charges that are still pending are just continuing the investigation. Uh, as it states, he was charged with basically one burglary at this point. Uh, that is just because of the initial charges uh, when he was arrested. We're now linking the information that he said, tying uh, him into the other evidence that we gathered to charge him with the other locations. What is that evidence, Joe? Like, are we talking cash registers? Are we talking property? It's everything. It's anything from DNA to any evidence that may have been left behind uh, by the suspect uh, to the evidence that we're gathering, uh, just confirming anything <coughs> that he said to us during the interview. And as far as the wall kill, though, in terms of what's been recovered, what's been recovered? A cash register was recovered in the wall kill, and uh, I believe there's another cash register that we learned is also at another location in the uh, wall kill. Do you have a motive in terms of why, is, why uh, he's doing this? Basically, at this time, uh, it appears that he's not working, um, needs some extra spending cash, <laughs> and uh, he needs to, you know, just to come up with some extra cash. Why were scuba divers sent out to the wall kill river? What initially, initially we sent the, uh, the Ulster County Sheriff's Office dive team out because when we were checking the area uh, that the officers followed up on, they found some stuff by the side of the uh, Walkill River. So when that occurs, we assume that other pieces of that evidence may be in the water, and that proved to be true. So he was taking <coughs> evidence, he was trying to get rid of some stuff. What was he sure. trying to get rid of? Uh, basically, he was throwing away uh, any of the items that uh, were taken that he did no longer need. Uh, cash registers, you know, once you take what's in them, you know, you don't want to have to try to carry them around. Uh, it's usually a good clue if officers see you walking with it, so <laughs> they, they get rid of that as quickly as they can. Now, this is 19 <coughs> businesses or you 20 total. 20 total. Is this 20, that's that, attempts as well as confirmed burglaries. Okay. Is this something that has really upset and, and worried a lot of business owners in this community? Yes, absolutely. And uh, there's there was a lot of concern, a lot of talk, what are the police doing, um, which is common in any investigation when something like this happens. If an arrest is made immediately after the first one, uh, the police department will get questioned, the, the town supervisor is going to get questioned. Uh, so we do put as much effort in po as possible, and again, with assistance from the sheriff's department, uh, sheriff's office, and the uh, police department of SUNY, you know, we work together and that provides the manpower to also keep our costs down in the process of doing these investigations. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of talk. We don't, unfortunately, release everything that we're working on uh, at the time so we don't compromise the investigation. You know, criminals read papers too, uh, so we avoid giving too much information uh, to help them out as well. And do you have any idea when he was allegedly burglarizing these places? Was it in the evening, morning, afternoon? They were all evenings. All evenings. Evenings into early morning hours. Joe, are they all um, commercial too? There's no. Uh, they were all commercial. Uh, again, burglaries are one of the toughest cases to work because you really don't have a witness unless, again, we put out the press release last time, hoping that if somebody sees something suspicious, to call us and have us look. Uh, this opportunity uh, that we had for the detectives and the officers to work to gather bits and pieces of evidence from each location shows that it's the same individual involved which is, uh, again, I, I give a lot of credit to the officers. The officers, with this detail that we've been performing, they actually found some of the burglaries 
shortly after they occurred, um, based on security checks, rattling doors and windows. You know, we didn't have to wait till the morning, which helps us preserve the evidence that much better. Joe, how many separate businesses? Were they, some of these were repeats or were they Some were repeats. Uh, most of them, a majority of them uh, were separate. I think we maybe had uh, four uh, locations that were the same. Were they all in the village or just the town? There were some in the town up on Main Street. There were a couple that occurred up on Main Street uh, going up towards McDonald's area. I believe and the highest motive, was up there. As for motive, you said that you need cash, she's not working, but a lot of people aren't working and need cash. So was there a drug dependency? Was there something going on that made him so desperate to? No, I, I believe it was just opportunity that uh, this individual had while, while he was in town. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't want to elaborate too much on, on you know how he was here uh, and what he was doing at the time. But uh, it, it appears that just opportunity was a big part of it as well. Sure. How many interviews did uh, were made in terms of uh, other suspects, or were there other suspects? Uh, there's numerous uh, officers. Again, were out there. <coughs> I also would like to thank the public because I know the people that are walking home from work or uh, walking their dog. They were stopped and questioned by officers. I've received some positive letters thanking us for what we were doing and they understand what we're doing, as well as we had a couple complaints saying, why am I being stopped again? Uh, Lieutenant Steve Ozerchuk uh, took many calls on that and uh, advised them that, you know, what we were doing and they were grateful by the time the phone conversation was over. But there were numerous people interviewed, uh, some over and over again by a different officer. So that just leads to, the, again, prove the work that the members were doing out there. Were there numerous interviews of suspects or of uh, the individuals? What, what I'm speaking of is uh, basically everybody that was walking the streets at a certain time, whether looking to see if they know anything or looking to see how they may tie into it. This suspect that we had, that was Mr. Keller, he was interviewed by one of our officers on one of the nights. He was not detained. Uh, there was nothing at that particular time that led him to the to be our burglary suspect, but information from that initial conversation with him led him to become a suspect of ours. You said you had surveillance. Do you have any fingerprints at any of these locations? We, we have numerous pieces of evidence. Uh, it ties into fingerprints, DNA, would it, whether they come back linking him or not uh, is yet to be determined. That's part of the ongoing investigation. But there's just numerous things. Nobody shows up at a scene without leaving a piece of something of themselves. Mm -hmm. Whether you see on TV, it's not as easy as TV, <laughs> where they, you know, you find a little hair in the corner. I always like to use that as an example. Uh, but there's pieces of evidence that's trace evidence that's left that we help put together to make the arrest. So there are two, the two charges. I, do they relate to one particular um, incident? Yes, this one relates to the uh, most recent. Okay, and which, can you tell us what that one was? Uh, I believe so they, we only have the first one. Scary. I don't have the name of that business. Uh, walking out. I, I can give it to you though. Okay. The first one was in Leadpot. That was what? Correct. That was the first one, and then from there it started. Uh, you know, every few days. So. What was the first one? The first one was at the, uh, the mud, uh, mud puddle cafe in the Water Street Market. Magdalene That's also on the uh, press release. Magdalene's Dream. Magdalene's Dream, oh, okay. and that was the. Uh, what the, day do we have a date on that? That was the second of February. <coughs> yeah, that was the second of February. And T, why was the bail set so high? There wasn't much cash stolen. It's a hundred thousand dollars bail that just kind of strikes at the court. So I haven't seen bail set that high very often. Well, I, I can't speak for the judge. The judge is the one that sets the bail. I believe on the fact that there was no uh, residence listed uh, for him. Uh, I believe that may have played a part. I also think, I, I also think that uh, although there wasn't a, a large cash value taken, the number of businesses that he entered and the, the uproar from the community based on his actions, uh, you know, basically terrorizing the community with this burglaries. You know, although it's just commercial businesses that still keep his livelihood. Do you know how long he's been in town? Is he a resident? How far back does he go? Does he have a record? He's a resident. Uh, I, I can't speak on any uh, past record on him. Uh, however, uh, he's been around this area for a while. His family's from this area. Did he operate on foot or on a car? 
during these times, everything, because he was by himself at the time, was on foot. Uh, whether he had some transportation getting to town or not, um, we're still working on those details. However, he did not have a car, and he, at this point, does not appear that he's working with anybody else. You said on, like, you might have gotten a ride to town. Was he in the New Paltz area, couch surfing right here in New Paltz, or was he going? Not necessarily, around? just the village of town, the surrounding area as well. Uh, during these burglaries, uh, he was in the area. They was he ever part of the Occupy New Paltz? No, he wasn't. Okay. And, and I'm happy to say that, and thank you for asking that, <laughs> yeah. because we did get a lot of question. concern or questions saying, are they the occupiers, uh, the Occupy for New Paltz? And no, it is not. You know, they actually have been very cooperative with us as well when we do uh, interview them, uh, as long as, as well as everybody else. Uh, but I'm happy to say that no, it was not. Can I just say one thing? Yes. Um, I just want to add that uh, when um, Chief Schneider talked about like the public, a lot of people being terrorized, you know, nowadays we have a lot of blogs and sharing of information, and people were getting very nasty towards the police in terms of when the police ask for help from the public and then we're waiting for the public to respond, but that they weren't constantly putting out information all the time, a lot of people on the blog started taking on the police and sort of saying, what are they doing? Why can't they you know, solve this problem? And they got very, very nasty. The police are not there to solve, to basically share information that's gonna compromise their investigation. They're there to do the job and get the job done, which is what the New Paltz police did in cooperation with the other officers, um, officers and whatever. So I think you know, just it's a lesson learned that the police are out there, they're doing their job, and it's real easy to say a lot of things on blogs, but at the end of the day, the police did what they had to do, and they brought this to conclusion, and that's the most important thing, and they did a great job, and I just want to you know, applaud all of them. Joe, was the arrest uh, the result of any particular um, you know, request for information? You know, the sorts of things that you sent out to the paper? You know, this arrest was uh, strictly from the officers in the street that uh, found him as a suspect. When was he questioned the first time? Uh, you know, I don't know the date, I think it was only about a week prior to that, a week or two prior to that. Prior to the, the arrest. arrest, yes. And was it in the town or the village on Main Street? Or did you say? He was what? interviewed in the village. In the village, yeah. We won't be able to ask those questions if we have one town. <laughs> <laughs> one village, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so any other questions? <laughs> Um, are we talking Facebook? <laughs> with Facebook? What kind of social media was kind of creating a hostility towards the police? Um, I think it's the New Paltz blog that's created through the village government. There's a blog through the village government. I think it's called New Paltz Gov or something. I'm not sure. I mean, I got a notice. I saw something from a resident, thought it was something official, whatever. <coughs> Actually happened to comment on it and found out it was a blog that was created uh, by the village government. And so information is put out on there, but then what happens is the information, instead of being put out there in a productive way to gather information, starts to take a life of its own. And in this particular case, it took a life of its own and started really going against the police very viciously. Um, and it was interesting to read it knowing what they were working on because we were in constant contact and knowing that um, something was imminent, but they can't put that out because, you know, like they said, the perpetrators read the blogs also. And we, as a police department, don't get involved with the blogs. Uh, trust me, there's a lot of things that come out in them, and you know, even members will be like, "How could they say that?" And blogs are what they are, and you know, we don't respond to them. We respond to the community, and uh, we like to respond with a great conclusion of an arrest. I don't have a question, but I have a request. I know that you said you had some of those items, um, and I'm assuming they're now in evidence. I didn't know if it was at all feasible to, you know, see the cash register or anything. Uh, I'll talk to the detectives, I'll see what's available, and if you leave your card, we'll, I'll get it to them and they'll reach out for you. Okay. As well, again, as if somebody wants a photo, I'll be happy to uh, get one emailed out to you. Just leave your card with us. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all coming today.